So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Um, my name is Lavinia Rogers. Um, I'm the World Language Specialist with the Maine Department of Education, and we are joined by uh, uh, with or by uh, um, yeah we're joined by Eren um, to talk about how we can take our routines um, and uh, with what we do in our classroom and then transition it to um, whatever circumstance we might find in the fall. Um, so Eren has retired after teaching for 40 years um, and is uh, bringing this information to us. So go ahead, Eren. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And um, as you may notice by my accent, I'm a native speaker fr from France. Um, but I'm a little bit different as far as native speakers um, teaching in the state uh, because I studied in the United States. I mean, I got my undergraduate degree in education and French <laughs> and uh, my graduate degree uh, in Roman studies. So um, everything, so for 40 years, that's what I have been doing, been teaching. Uh, although I haven't taught uh, high school the entire time, I taught college uh, at the university level for 15 years. And, uh, and then after that, I taught between third grade, believe it or not, mm -hmm. and 12th grade. So I've taught the whole spectrum. But why am I here? Because during those 40 years, for three years, maybe even four, you know, um, I taught online. And 15 years ago, <laughs> I started a certificate in online teaching. And with that certificate, I thought, hey, I was going to do something fabulous in my school district. Well, they didn't care because nobody was thinking about online teaching. So I just put it in the back of my mind and uh, I said, so maybe someday. And of course I had to retire to use it. <laughs> I'm not using it now because I'm retired. So anyhow, uh, that's where, uh, where I'm at and uh, why I'm here today. Uh, so how did I survive 40 years? It's a long story, but that's not for today. So <laughs> first of all, a disclaimer. Um, I'm not an IT person. I'm not a tech guru. And I'm not going to give you any links to check. I remember, uh, who was it who just, oh yes, Claire, who had uh, seven days of torture uh, as far as how to use the internet. I, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do with you today and we're going to do together is to look at what we have done all along and how we can bring it into our hybrid or blended class. And I think this is, uh, this is very important because uh, one of the things that we all need to do if we're going to be teaching online is to get away from being fearful and this is a new thing that we have to jump into. Now you got to use what you already have. You have to rely upon what you've done and what has worked. What we're gonna to do together today is see what you have and shift it and make it powerful in an hybrid system. Does that work for everybody? Thumb up or no? All done. Up, down? Okay. All right, wonderful. Um, just like Beth Ann, my former mentee, <laughs> said, um, the first thing, guys, you got to take care of yourself. That has been my, my motto for as long as I've had children. I've had children. I mean, 40 years, yes, two children to take care of, two husbands to take care of. I've had my hands full, okay? So you got to take care of yourself. If you don't, you cannot teach correctly. And I've seen uh, in some of the uh, the meetings of all the teachers, how 
anxious everybody is, overworked everybody is. And I always said, you got to, life is beyond the classroom too, so you have to take care of yourself. And this is in particular for Lavinia. Okay, <laughs> she, she needs it too. <laughs> All right. Um, the other big item that I always have when I try to uh, teach anything is that, and I'm going to repeat myself to some of you, uh, you got to go slow to go fast. You have to really slow down, take a breath, figure it out, and then you can go and really dwell into something. So we're going to start with um, just a general description of what is the routine. So I'd like all of you to think for about 30 seconds, not more because we only have an hour and a half, uh, about one routine that you had in your former life in the classroom. And please raise your hand. And uh, Lavinia, can you handle people? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, just a simple routine that you had in your foreign language classroom. Any, okay. Go ahead, Natalie. And then that's Anne. Just very basic. Always, I like to start the class with, um, you know, going over the date. What's the date today? And, you know, uh, what's the weather, you know, maybe asking people, of course, asking people how they are and if they want to share something that they did the night before, you know, if, if they had the level of discussing in the past, obviously, or um, just a basic routine like that. Okay. That's, you know, so, uh, yes, Michelle? I did the same and I'm wondering how I, because I used to do it, um, I had my students assist with some of those activities at one point when they were ready, right? So mm -hmm. the agenda, um, the objective, all of my students, but I would pull popsicle sticks. So I have to figure out how to do a popsicle stick type routine. Um, okay. Hoping that some will have ideas for me. All right. I will probably have an answer for all of those, those two. <laughs> yes. Anna and Nancy. Yeah, I, I did the same. There was always a touch base and um, a review always a review of what we'd covered the day before or if it was a Monday the week before just to get the students back into that frame of thinking before you start teaching but definitely um, you want to make a connection so comment ça va quelle est la date you know those kind of routines um, but they were very brief then it was usually straight into a, a review of some so sort. you wanted to 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 bring them uh, into learning French for that day. That's what you yeah. say. Yeah. Okay. I saw Beth Ann's hand. Okay, hold on Beth Ann. I can't hear Beth Ann. Sorry. So I would start each each class with a campana with a bell ringer. And so and I would have it projected on the whiteboard when the kids walked in. So they knew that their their task was to sit down look at the board and find out what the bell ringer was the bell ringer was always a review in one way or another of the day's lesson prior okay anybody else want to share no uh what what was the purpose per se of this uh exercise and all of them seem to be uh, asking to for the students to focus but are they uh, truly review are they uh, target language oriented or are they classroom management oriented yes Bethan? for me it was both um, the fact that it was projected on the board and the kids knew that that was how we started every day was classroom management. The okay. content of it to review the days prior was target language. All right. What about you, Natalie? I would say both also. I mean, I always, 
think of them more as a language um, activity, but it is also to get everybody to kind of like, okay, you're not in the class you were before, you're not in a hallway anymore, you know, you're, okay, mm -hmm. sit down, we're in, en français maintenant, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And it, so, I mean, this is definitely uh, something that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, and unfortunately, with an hybrid system uh, or fully online system, uh, the management part is really not 100% in your hands. Because uh, that classroom is directed by your principal and your school district. Whether you're going to be, uh, whatever you're requiring is you're going to require it because your school district said you need to do this or you need to do that. So uh, very often you're going to have to let go of some of the typical management pieces of your classroom. Uh, you know that when they shift from one classroom to another, you have to refocus them, you have to do this, you have to do that. You won't be able to do that per se in an hybrid classroom. So um, that it's really hard to have two masters in a way with you in the classroom. Your school district telling you, for example, what I've heard, uh, don't grade the, the students or uh, you cannot if they don't show up don't don't worry about it or things of that nature so um, it's really you're gonna have to let go of that that piece because it's not up to you and that's at this point uh, but the language piece is important um, so what I would like to to uh, to really look at is um, really the the piece that um, that is the teaching piece we'll talk about the management of an hybrid class in a little bit is that all right with everybody okay um, let's let's talk so let's look at for example um, what all of you have said, you know, you have something that keeps them busy immediately or, or focuses them. How could you do that in a blended classroom? And really what you're going to have to be is very clear on your goal. Do I want them to be present just to turn on the, the computer, okay, and to be there? Or do I want them to learn the language immediately? Or how do I blend the two? Or what is it that I want to do? So uh, I've, my suggestion as far as the, for example, the, the telling the weather, I think it's a great thing. I think it's a fabulous thing. So how can we go from what you used to do to what needs to be done in an hybrid situation? Well, let me give you an example and this is like right off my my head at this moment but i uh is each student has a country each student has a a town assigned and they have to come to you the day uh, you know they have to to post that weather every time that you request. So you're shifting it. They have to post it, hopefully in a blog, so that everybody else can see it, in English or not. Because if it's a level one class, for example, whether it's Spanish or French, um, or German, <laughs> excuse me, if there are German <laughs> speakers here, um, you may not be in at the level one situation you may not be teaching them or you know working with the language but you might be uh presenting francophone country or or you know all kind of countries where they become the knowledgeable person in that country 
uh, and with the weather and so on. Does that make sense to you? So you shifted it. Maybe it's because you don't need to have them sit down in, at their desk. You want them to get something out of the exercise. And, you know, level one, you start slow and then little by little, you, you teach the weather, you teach the date and all that. And then that becomes in the target language. So you're blending the two. And something that you can shift, you can give a different city every two or three weeks or a different country, whatever it is. All they have to do is go to the internet, okay? Personally, I will see that as, you know, kind of a number of points. I've always liked when I grade to, to give points for everything, not a grade. But at the very end of the quarter or of the semester, X number of points gives you that grade, X number of points to give you that grade. Um, Believe it or not, this is something that I, I learned teaching at the university. Uh, so, and I like it, it works for me uh, because I can go along um, and maybe even add points here and there, bonus and so on. Okay, so basically, I'm gonna show you something. Also, um, another a routine that could be shifted. Do you all know? Can you see this? Yes. Do you know, all know this? Yeah. Okay. Well, how could you sh shift it? Can somebody come up? How could you shift this into what I just said? Into that weather uh, and uh, date situation. How could you shift? Okay. I um, see Jean. Jean yes. Gina? Uh, yeah. You could ask them to, to say what time it is in the country that they've been assigned. Or the country. Okay, that this is not a clock. Oh, I have no idea then. This, this <laughs> is this is the the what I used to use around the clock for partners, oh, partners. to speak to each other. Oh. Okay. 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 Um, if I this is oh, this is great stuff. Here's an example. So simple. Yeah. Okay. I had two two things. Um, yes, I did a map of France. Mm -hmm. Yes, cities. Yeah. yeah, and the cities were assigned, and they had to go around and get the partner to sign for each city, and they couldn't yeah. have repeat. Um, exactly. So, so then I would say Strasbourg, mm. uh, uh, yes, Marseille, and and that would be their partners. That would be that partner. Yes, but I and, and you can that use that. Yes. Here. But quite often I found that they lose it and then yeah. they didn't have the map. So I came up with index cards and I would shuffle the index cards and I would just pull two cards. So they never got the same partner twice. And if I was going to do groups of four, I would do the same. I would pull four cards randomly and say, voila. Okay. Well, you know, this is great because now that you are in an hybrid situation, this is all posted. Yes. Today it's Marseille. Tomorrow it's Strasbourg, and so on and so on. Or today it's your two o'clock uh, partner. It depends what you want them to get to know. Whether you want them to get to know the time, or you want them to get to know France, or the Francophone world, or South America, or whatever, or cities, or countries. Uh, that is up to you and what and what you need to do. I will say this guy is really for the, the level one and uh, then you go on to other things. Uh, but you see how we can shift from one to the other? Claire mentioned in the chat that she had used Google Docs um, with links to other Google Meets uh, mm -hmm. to kind of serve as breakout rooms since I think that feature doesn't happen in, in Google Meets. Um, but she also said that the doc was doc, document was out of the group sign up. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh. Your sound cut out, Lavinia. Yeah. Uh, she she mentioned is that better? Yeah. Okay. She mentioned that the the kids could sign up with the with the document that it was editable. Um, yes. So 
Beth Ann, did you have another thought? On how to do breakout rooms with Hangouts Meets? Oh no, with the, I thought I saw your hand with the question that Yaren posted. No, it, it, we went past it. And Google Meets will have breakout rooms because I was on a conference call today, so they will have breakout rooms by next time. But I, saw, know, I, I, I got to be honest with you, uh, whenever I taught uh, online, I used uh, Canvas, Schoology, Blackboard. Blackboard was the one I didn't like. It was too complicated. Uh, Canvas was fabulous. Schoology is good too. And I'm hoping for your sake all that your school will go with one of those uh, LMS because it really makes it a lot easier for the teacher. And uh, so that's um, that's kind of what I'm hoping for you guys. Uh, the other thing is that once we get into the nitty gritty of how to set up your hybrid class, uh, I'm going to tell you that it is very easy. Let's say we all go back to school, not me, but you guys go back to school in September, 100% face to face. That preparation will not be lost. In fact, it will help you uh, get to a point, it will even make your life easier once you are face to face. On another hand, if they decide that you are not going to even go hybrid and you're going to go 100% online, it's only a hop away from that. So uh, if you decide to, to prep your class for hybrid, uh, you're going to save a lot of time one way or another. Okay, uh, so let's let's move on to um, my my saying: "Go slow to go fast." You are going to be setting up your class in such a way that it is extremely clear for the student, and it has one of the. Um, it's clear as far as where are we going, what we're doing, and how they're going to get graded. So that if a student arrives, and for two weeks, that's all you're going to do. You're going to make it very clear for this. So think about the fact that you're not going to be teaching that much the first two weeks of class. Because what you want is to create a new culture and you want to support the students. Yes, you're going to give grades, you're going to do kind of little things that are target, or, uh, target language oriented, but you're not going to uh, heavily grade because you're going to be there just to, to show them that they can succeed. And this is probably the most difficult things. Who in here has taken online classes at the graduate level? You know how they are, okay? If you forget to, to talk to, uh, to three people or four people or chat on something, puff, you, you, lose, you lose points. If, you, uh, if you're supposed to write 200 words and you write 158, you lose points. I mean, this is, uh, and you have to answer all the different things. And what do you do the first week of class? You make mistakes or you read the instruction 20 times, mm -hmm. it's the same thing for the kids. So you yourself as a teacher, you have to be extremely, extremely clear in what you are going to do. So um, basically clarity, clarity is your friend, okay? And planning, is your strengths. Otherwise, you're going to lose yourself and you're going to lose your students. The other piece is that if you plan very nicely, you know that kid that arrives October 3rd and the one that arrives November 5th? Well, you can just give him the whole thing and starting again from scratch, which it's already, it's there, you have it. So you don't need to spend another two hours after school to catch him up or catch her up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're going to be 
in a way working better okay um, so let's see the word routine for me is more something that I think is very very important in middle school in elementary school at the level one of language ninth grade maybe but it gets not as important maybe uh, to manage the classroom so what i would like it to i would like us to shift from the word routine to the word strategy because a strategy has a purpose a routine has a purpose, but it's now. A strategy has a long-term purpose. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. you, you want it to be... Um, I, like, I like the fact that they know... I mean, a simple things, for example. They had to say good morning to me in French, or good afternoon to me in French. That's a routine but it's also a strategy okay they had to ask me if they wanted to go to the bathroom in french that's a routine but it's also a strategy although by the way i'm just an aside here i have never asked my students in 40 years to say may i go to the bathroom i've always asked them to say the bathroom please because if they ever go to france they will never say to a waiter may i go to the bathroom <laughs> right <laughs> they will say the bathroom please <laughs> okay a little aside <laughs> i see that <laughs> i see that natalie is laughing <laughs> but it is a useful thing and mm -hmm when they have they do their little skit on uh, being at a cafe in paris they can kind of sneak in <laughs> the bathroom please <laughs> you know instead of hey may i go to the bathroom <laughs> it's not gonna work okay so that was an aside i've lost my train of thought now um so how can we switch our, our routines into strategies well, like I said, you have to be very clear on your goal. Okay, is it useful? Does it, is it fall, falling under the I can do act fail requirements? Is it something that I can build on? I, when it comes to the weather in Maine, when it snows for 10 days, and even if I change the kids every day, it's already on the board and they know how to say it. So maybe I want to uh, do something different to teach them some other weather because January is going to be snowy. Okay, so that's why I like the idea of online asking them to give the weather of another country because it's two purposes it becomes a strategy here it requires them to be in, to you know find out about another country and it can work from there you know give me some other things about the country and it's a back door to learning about the world that you're supposed to teach about you know something beyond just France. What do you think? No questions so far? No? Okay, so let's, uh, let's take another, um, another example. Did somebody else have a, a routine that we can convert to hybrid? The one that uh, Bethlehem was talking about, something that's already written. How could you con convert that from 
or did you already convert it into uh, online? Bethann? No? I had Looks a, like Natalie has something too. After yeah. Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay, I was going to say, um, I created uh, the slideshows mm -hmm. and I would share my screen when they came on and the first slide would be like the ones that um, Beth Ann was saying she would put up on the board, you know, bell work. And then the second slide would be the answer so that they could actually do it on a piece of paper and then check their answers. Um, sometimes I included video clips, songs, uh, many musical, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I tried doing rapid fire questions, um, but I found that was very ineffective online. And also very hard on you, I will imagine. You had to prepare all that. Yeah, but the the questions didn't work. They literally did what I did a second ago: shut off the camera, shut off the mic, and getting them back on again. I teach high school, mm -hmm. and it was just very difficult to get them. To, I'd, I'd have to say, "Ouvrez le microphone, je peux parler." You know, I'd, I'd have to mm -hmm. get heavy-handed about it because they just shut it off, and there'd be no response. Like you just said, any questions? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, they, yeah. So the slideshows worked for me, but I don't know about others. Well, uh, we will we will talk about what needs to be done to get uh, them engaged in a little bit. But um, the one thing is is that obviously, if there is a uh, were you face to? Were you on Zoom all the time with during the entire hour with them? Is that what you were? Yes. Yes. We well, the district started with three hours, and then they said that was just too much. Um, cut it down to an hour. So I was teaching three-hour classes. So at the beginning, one morning, the afternoon would be a different class for three hours. Next day would be a different level. The afternoon would be three hours, three hours. Then they said, we'll keep it as three hours, but you only teach for an hour. And, huh. you know, I did a variety. There was listening, there was watching, there was worksheet. Yeah. Um, but it, it was the, the getting them to respond. The, the mm -hmm. ones who would respond would be your most successful. Yeah. The one everybody well, else was just turn off the camera, turn off the microphone, yeah. and, and go. Say nothing. Well, the thing is, is that it's not an hybrid class if you're going to be uh, on Zoom all the time with them. That's that yeah. doesn't work. Uh, a, a true hybrid class is has uh, all everything happens. No, not everything. Uh, the a lot of work must be done ahead of time online mm -hmm. in order to participate in the Zoom class. And there is no repetition between the two. For example, you prepare them uh, to uh, use the passé composé in the written form and so on. And you tell them that when we get to be face to face, oh, not face to face, but on Zoom, then you're going to be required to say this and this and that. And at that point, I will grade what you did in writing and grade what you're doing uh, in speaking. But I think the big issue when uh, we, you know, all went into confinement. <laughs> when into um, in, into quarantine is that oh everything was going to shift to Zoom well no uh, an online class you only are talking to your students one or two hours a week you are available to your students one or two hours a week so one hundred percent online you do not spend your time. Uh, talking to your students. 
On another hand, you may have your office hours or your open time at six o'clock in the evening. And uh, I know that I spoke with Levania about that, that you know, we're gonna have students who are gonna go back to work on, in September. They're gonna go to work because they need the money and they're not gonna look at, if school is you know, online, they'll do it at another time. So how can that work if they work too? I mean, there are so many issues that, that uh, I hope the superintendents and the, um, and the principals are gonna deal with. But um, I'm gonna tell you something, Nancy, is that, and I, I, I think Bethan is going to, to laugh about that one. Um, if you work a lot harder than your students, there is something wrong. Okay, you need to, you, they need to work more than you. And that's, uh, Bethan, have I told you that a few times? Never, and Lavinia, stop grinning. <laughs> you, they it really, I mean, I'm not saying that you should, you know, just eat bonbons and watch TV all day long, but what I'm telling you is that they need to do the work. And, uh, and you're gonna have to have the support of your principal as far as grading and all that. Yes, Michelle. So I, I looked at a corner because I wanted to just Google what is hybrid learning because I think it means something that different to everyone. At one point I thought, well, maybe the students are gonna, that are internet while I'm in the classroom, they're gonna watch what I'm doing. So nothing's really been defined by the district what hybrid means because when you Google it, it means oh. everything. It's yeah. just in the classroom all the time. So what you're right. telling me is possibly the district's gonna say, okay, flip learning is the model where you might have a lot of videos, things for them to work on when they're not with you, mm -hmm. that you're asking to be responsible for, so that when you're with them, you're helping them solve problems that they may have had in doing the um, online. That will be, that, yes, that, that, that's yeah. kind of what, what uh, iBraid will be, would be, you know, that okay. there is a, a flip learning, uh, it's exactly that, because you don't want to spend your time when you with them, uh, remashing what they should have done at home. I was only teaching maybe 20 minutes out of my hour and the rest of it was time for them to work on their assignments. And then some of them left early, some of them stuck around. But a whole hour- But why, why should you be there? I mean, it, it makes no sense, you online. know? Online, well, you're, I, it was Spanish, so Spanish was optional. Mm -hmm. Last yeah, well. <laughs> And so you, you know, just we are the fifth wheel of the wagon, you know. But that's, uh, changing. that's changing next time anyway. So it'll be required, and I assume kids will be there on time versus popping in 20 minutes late, um, which is where you couldn't keep the same routine of, hey, let's do the weather, let's do that, because they kept popping in late, missing, and distract everyone with the same thing. But right? in a blended learning, it won't work. I mean, the 20 minutes late, it's, I mean, just think of your classes that you took online. If that was the case, you would have never gotten a grade, right? And I think the districts are doing, I mean, I don't want to say that you aren't, but I believe the districts are doing something about making sure that kids are in the class this time. So there will be truancy if they're not the class. Um, they're making sure there's grades even for the, the mods, Spanish and other. So I think that will help because you had just started, whatever your administration does, that's what you don't have control over. But at least, and I'm leaving the district for RSU 22, but they had a plan to make truancy a true thing. And um, that's where, where a learning management system will help yes. because they can, they can check on that. Yes. They can do that. And uh, people and have those tools, which makes sense for your flipped learning, that that would match what they're going to do on their support end. So that when they do have a problem, we, can, we know they'll be at our class or they'll be truant. I mean, we know that they'll be there so we can help fix thoughts in their heads and help them clarify anything. We couldn't do that before. Mm -hmm. your well, that's, that's good news. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted Anybody? to add that your, the model of, I love the idea of making the kids responsible to bring in the work, the countries and such. One of the things I did was, um, that I want to modify now, is I actually gave them a, a question of the day as part of the attendance. I used Zoom before and then they have attendance. So they had a question of the day, but I posted the question from yesterday 
on a slide so that they would work and then read while walk, while waiting for other people to come in. So I can see how your model could work, especially if I kept them busy from the minute they went into the class, or I could actually postpone it a day. So they could see the weather from yesterday from Germany and Spain and from wherever. <laughs> And that's just an example. This yeah. is, you know, a, like, really like the, it's just a little tidbit. But really, you're going to need the support of a, a the management piece yeah. uh, should be set up. And like the then you, you add the, the content to it. Uh, because truancy and so on should not be your, your issue uh, with a blended uh, situation. And it has but, to be consistent yes. with, all the, yes. with all the subjects and all the teachers. If not, we're like, especially when we're teaching languages and the kids are so overwhelmed with the other classes and, and you're telling them, okay, I'm, you're behind. You haven't done the last five assignments. Oh, I'm catching up on English and math and these first. Then I'll get to French. Yes. And, you know, but, uh, you know, what you were saying, Michelle, is something's going to have to be, some rules are going to have to be set up where the kids, they attend all the meetings on time, they're dressed, they're, the camera is on, mm -hmm. um, the academic honesty has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be consequences. It was awful at the end of the quarter here. It was just, it was just a mess. Yeah, but that's, you see, but this is something that is assumed when you teach online, okay? That you have to have those, those things. Uh, as, as far as, I like I like what you said, Natalie, about the fact that um, you know the kids have to pick one class for another. One of the biggest error that teachers make is yeah. because it is suddenly online, they give a lot more work because they want their worth to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is up to the principal and it uh, or your curriculum coordinator or whomever is in charge to let them know that they have to uh, not do that. You cannot replay, you cannot uh, give 20 hours of work right. when in fact you see the student five hours a week. I mean, this is insane. It was a problem at the beginning. I mean, the teacher, and I think even myself included, mea culpa, I was doing it too. We were giving way too much, and then the, the, the principal was saying, "You can only give about three hours of work a week." Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, it was difficult. I think it was difficult for me. It was difficult for the other teachers, and and the kids were writing and saying, "You know, the, you know, so many teachers are giving me so much work. It's beyond three hours still, and you know." They were very overwhelmed. Even the best again, again, because also they, they, they was brand new. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, everybody was brand new for everybody, and yeah. and but you have the the opportunity right now to to uh, plan ahead a little yes. bit, and yeah. so when I talk about strategies, is that you have to be very clear about your goal. You have to work backward when you plan. Mm -hmm. And you need for who has a, a quarter system, who only teach six weeks at a time and changes because middle schoolers, sometimes you only six, see, see them for six weeks or whatever, and you don't see them again. Uh, I was year round. I was at middle school. It was year round. But usually year round. Yeah. But I will suggest to you, and not, not suggest, I'm telling you, okay, <laughs> because... I'm looking for uh, work, so it's good to know what I should be looking out for. <laughs> yes, I, I'm telling you that you have to plan for a semester. You have to plan for a semester. And you put, uh, let's say, if, uh, I think it's, what, 16 weeks? Something like that? I don't remember exactly how many weeks, but... And then you, you say, okay, what do I want to accomplish in those days? So you plan backward. I know it's like going back to, uh, to taking methods, you know, uh, but that's the only way you're going to be able to s explain it clearly to the students. 
What is it that I want them to do? All those I can do things that ACTFEL offers you, you can decide which one you're going to do by to make sure that you are your students have to do by the end of the semester. Then you go back, what out of all of these, what are the ones that I want them to know by the end of the quarter? Okay, so absolutely backward. Okay, now the other piece that is extremely important in um, is that you have to decide how you're going to format your class. And you're going to format it and you're going to stick to it for the entire semester. Okay. You cannot have a video one day and have a puzzle the next day and have this one day. No, you got to decide right up front and that format is going to be the format you're going to use every single week. I, I'm going to tell you it can be a format that you expand on two weeks. It doesn't have to be a one week format, but it has to be repeating itself. This is what you're going to get for two weeks. Okay, uh, let's say we have five hours. I, I'm, I'm going to use that. It's easier, easier for me. Five hours of class per week. Uh, we have out of those, we're going to have a chat. We're going to have writing exercise. We're going to have reading and we're going to have speaking. Okay. And every week it's going to be this every two weeks or every week it's going to be the same thing. And when I talked about the first two weeks, you're going to be very clear. We're going to run through the first all these steps and I'm going to be available for any, if you have questions, make sure everybody understands that, for example, every day I have to con contact my partner and we are going to do this or that about our tongue, whatever you decide. Every day, uh, on day two, I'm going, it's, I'm going to be watching a video, not day one, not day three, on day two. I know that I have to do that. Or you can say, this is what you have to do for five weeks. This is the online portion. You can do it uh, how you wish, but it has to be done. But it repeats itself. You cannot say suddenly, wow. I got a great idea. I think I'm going to show them this or I'm going to do this. And then you prepare that and it, puff, it flops because nobody was expecting it. They were not ready for it. Think again about your courses that you took where the syllabus was very clear. You need a syllabus. I mean, as a veteran teacher, I'm going to tell you, I didn't even have plans, you know. I have not written a syllabus in years because I could do it with my eyes closed and I knew exactly where I was going and so on. It was, a, But online, you cannot do that, unfortunately. You're going to have to have a syllabus, work backward from and have a semester ready. Okay. Does that sound terrible? <laughs> Nobody's talking. <laughs> Mary, you're laughing. Tell me. <laughs> Mary Fritz. Oh, oh. Oh, hi, this is Gina. I think this sounds fabulous because I've been kind of struggling without my normal routines and procedures. So this is really encouraging to me. So thank you. No, you're welcome. Any other comment? Yes, I have a question. Sure. <laughs> yes, um, I was listening to you and I love the strategy you are giving because that's one of the main um, area that I'm not strong in. Um, I take a lot of time planning. 
Mm -hmm. And like you say, if we work hard and then the students, there's something wrong. So I believe there's something wrong too. And that's why I, I say, let me take some webinars and see what I'm doing wrong. That, Like I, you know, I spent hours planning. So, and when you say we have to work backwards, mm -hmm. what about if we have um, administration that never give us time? to to know in advance what's going on and they will talk like thanks to you and you say okay this is due next week now we're gonna do a video for this for that and for well-being and so like the district is putting information to them and then there's see because i believe that nobody was ready for mm -hmm. this um new format nobody was ready for it so there's a lot of last minute uh information told to the teachers and then you just kind of, like you said, you ask the student, can I, can we do it? You're gonna do a video today, but it was not in the plan, but because mm -hmm. you have to follow the demand of your administrator and you, you know, you don't wanna get fired, whatever the reason is. So you are changing your, um, your plan and that puts you as a, you know, behind and you don't look like you have a, you have a plan to follow because you're changing most of the time. So what advice you have for, well, you put your your foot down because you're going to come to them with a a reasoning and a plan that makes sense. And this is, you know, that has been, I guess, my strength through my, my career is that uh, once I know that I can defend what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I defend it. Okay. So, okay. Um, but I understand. I understand what you're saying. Uh, it's like you know that like the field trips you know <laughs> you expected all the students to be in your classroom and suddenly half of them are on a field trip and nobody yeah. told you anything about it so we we know about that but the piece that's online once you set up they can do it at, at their leisure so it's up to you also not to have uh, demands that are so incredible that there are deadlines all the time uh, and I'm going to talk about that in the first two weeks when you present your class to uh, and your your format to the students uh, you're going to uh, let them know that they are entitled to go past deadline X number of times whatever you decide let's say because we all need mental health days we all you know have our own things happening and so do they and we know that so but you give them you give them room so that they and you tell them you email me you tell me and we'll work together so you create a a link between them and you and especially remember, you know, in foreign languages, we are very lucky. Very often we have the same students for a long time and we get to create that relationship in the classroom. But you're gonna get a brand new bunch of students too. So you're gonna have to create a relationship that is not face to face. And that's email and, and you're going, but they have to see, you're gonna to have to be much more flexible in many ways, but flexible in a different, uh, different situation. So if they are late, what is your purpose? What is your goal for them to learn the language, not for them to learn to be on time? Let that to somebody else. That's not your job. Uh, you will encourage them and maybe you take a point here and a point there off because they are being let too often but on another hand you know you're getting them to work work for mastery that is your purpose you work you teach for mastery you want them to achieve at whatever le level they are able to but that's your goal Grades should not be such a big deal. Grades should be a reward. And, you know, if you work with points, like I said, that I've always done, 
let's say by the end of the quarter, you have 700 points and little Joe has 520. But you know that he has issues and but he did his best and so on. You know, you, you, can, you can change the grade that you give the administration based on that. And, and we have IEPs and we have, you know, all the other stuff that com comes into place. So it's up to you to have that uh, flexibility. And you have that flexibility now, anyhow, you know, by quizzes being retaken. Same thing online. If they want to retake the quiz, fine. They can retake it. And maybe you say, okay, now you've taken it twice. You're probably writing down all the answers somewhere. <laughs> so or checking it in. But maybe the quizzes need to be in the face-to-face -face portion. If we go hybrid, there will be a face-to-face -face portion. Quizzes at, at that time. Uh, writing at that time so that they can't use Google Translate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. On another hand, if you give them a writing assignment and they use Google Translate, then you'll say, "Fine, now you want." And but your purpose is only uh, to see, you know, how much they did. But maybe you are asking specifically to use one the past tense or whatever you've taught this week, maybe that's all you're, gonna, you're going to grade. Um, one thing that, I, I, that is important also, especially with online teaching, is to be very precise on what you are grading. Don't grade two or three things at the time, okay? If you want to grade the passé composé, grade that. Forget the other stuff. If you want to grade, um, you know, sometimes we give them a reading and we want them to answer in French. Well, you're grading two things. You're grading the reading mm. and comprehension mm -hmm. and you're grading writing. Don't do it. But that's teaching stuff. That's, this is not, this is something that you should even do in your classroom when you go back face to face. Don't mix it. Give them a reading in French, ask the question in English. There is no confusion. You want them to respond. Nathaniel, uh, Natalie, uh, I see I that. Agree. I do that. Yeah, I do that. It, yes. It's very important not yeah. to, to mix things. Um, if you want them to use certain vocabulary, don't grade what is the grammatical errors. You want them to use the, the words. Um, and in a way, with online teaching, this is much easier to do. Um, because you can really uh, focus on the goal that you have. Questions? So really you have to decide what, what, you, are, what you want to do. Okay, now you are going to hear, and I'm sure uh, Claire who has, you know, graduated in, in uh, <laughs> in technology he's going to say you know where does that all of that technology comes in well you don't have to use everything pick a couple things that are good for you and say to yourself you're going to use it every in that one block of one week or two weeks you're going to use that technology once twice whatever it is and that's it don't try, you know, it's, uh, I see uh, Beth Ann, yes. Beth Ann, you, you, you raise your hand. Oops, you are. Sorry. 
I didn't want to interrupt your thought, but, no. but twice now I've thought, you know, this, the idea of the routine, you know, if we have like two weeks and a cycle of on Mondays, we do this on Tuesdays, we do that Wednesdays, we do this and we repeat it um, to make sure we have that in place. And then what you were just saying, you know, with picking certain platforms and using those repetitively, mm -hmm. is there a concern about it becoming boring? Nothing stops you from, um, well, you don't want to have anything more than once. I mean, personally, you know, I mean, uh, I will not use, I, I, nothing is coming to my head right now. Uh, you know, in a classroom, I used um, Quizlet, for example, okay? Um, if you use it too often, it, it becomes a bore too, okay? Right. So you could say in your preparation that you're gonna use a certain thing, you know, uh, you could, you could uh, let's say, you decide that you're gonna use certain things for two weeks, and then you leave one open, a surprise block, you know? A surprise thing it could be a video that day that you they have to listen to uh, watch and then they answer questions it could be a, a fun design thing that they, they can do a, whatever you could very well introduce you know your latest knowledge into that block and at the end of the semester you change the whole thing if you want and start a French. Uh, so there are, s what I, I, I really would like to see you do is to be very clear on your goal and to cut it in little pieces to start from September to December, cut it in small pieces, you know, make sure that it's where you're gonna go and how you're gonna do it and make sure that the students understand. And that is my biggest, uh, just as te uh, principals don't understand <laughs> certain things, we're gonna have to teach them about hybrid and blended. I'm sure Lavania know all about that. Uh, they, they have to learn too, they don't know. I mean, most of them have never been in, the, in more than three years in the classroom anyhow to start with. Remember that, okay? They don't know that much about face-to-face. -face. I think to be a principal, you have to be in the classroom, what, five years? Only three. Three? Oh, wow, here yeah. we go. I'm gonna make one one day, so that's how I know it. So, they, they don't know. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that they can't learn, but right now they have their hands full too. Okay, so. Even experienced principals, I had an amazing one, um, you've been 30 years, if they ever never taught a language, they don't know. It's just different yeah. than other subjects. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our kids are supposed to be confused. They're learning a new language. Yes. Like, sometimes they walk in a room like, they're confused. Oh no, slow down. Well, that's just... <laughs> and of course, there's time we need to slow down, but that's... So when not, I... When, when, I, when you... Something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done. I... When, when you plan, you know, make us make sure that you have, for example, a video that they watch about a monument. Yeah. And they know that every week or every two weeks, they're gonna watch a monument, a video on a monument, and they're gonna have to answer some questions. They know that. And in your bag of tricks, Let's say it's one, you got 14 monuments to come up with. Yeah. So what do you do this summer? You, you get 14 videos. That's, that's time consuming. But once you have that, yeah. once you have put your five or six questions, not something very long, video probably 10 minutes and or 15 minutes. But remember, now they know that they have to watch. And if they watch it and they answer the question, they get 40 points. Okay, so if they go to the neighbor's house and they work with 
uh, their friend and they watch this, the video and they, well, what is your purpose? Your purpose is for them to watch the video and learn something. That's fine. In the classroom, they will be thinking, they will be, you know, flying three feet above the ground anyhow. So don't worry about it. The idea is for them to watch the video. The beauty about LMS is that you are able to see whether they watch the video. Yeah. That will be your, that will be available to you. Uh, in a Google Doc with a link, you can't, you can't make sure they did. And you can't on, um, in Google Classroom, the no. only way I can tell if a kid watched a video is if I drop it into Edpuzzle. Yeah. I mean, to my knowledge. Yeah. I mean, maybe there that's, are other ways, but that's the way I know. I, yeah. I, would, I would really push, push, push your, your um, principles to let you work in, for example, Schoology. I don't know how expensive it is. I don't think, they, I, I don't think it's expensive at all for the school. Uh, but, or Canvas for that matter. Yeah, I know that Lincoln Academy has been using Canvas. Oh, it's the great. Last, the last few months, yeah. yeah. Canvas is what uh, the state of Maine used when I was teaching uh, AP for All for them. Mm. And we had used Schoology for a year and then they, no, no, we have used Moodle, I'm sorry. Oh, we yeah. used Moodle for a year. And then we switched to Canvas. What a wonderful set. Wow. That was very, very nice. So try to see, I mean, I know Moodle is free. Um, and even if your school doesn't use it, if it's free, uh, I think teachers can use it without the authorization of the school. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Canvas, but I, I know Moodle is free for any educator. Yeah, and I think Claire has a, I know Claire has a question um, yeah. that she wanted to make sure that she had a chance to ask you. Yeah. Um, just a comment actually about knowing if the kids watch videos. I made up a Google Doc that was kind of the weekly schedule for them. And if I assigned a video for listening, then I would do an Ed Puzzle sometimes, but I would also sometimes just ask them to summarize it or write down words that they hear and they had to put that in the Google Doc. And if they did some other sort of online thing, I would say take a screenshot and post your picture in the Google Doc. So that way you can see if they do it. It was synchronous. Uh, at the time you were teaching it, they were doing it? No. Um, okay. So I would, I would teach the class and I spent most of my time I would do a little bit of instruction at the beginning and then I would let them work in groups, speaking or doing an activity together because that was the connection that they missed the most was uh -huh. working with each other. Um, but then they would also have like five or six activities that they had to do during the week before the next class. Uh -huh. And so those were the things like watching the video or um, do these three activities. And, and I understand that uh, when it, it's 100% online and that the edge group, they really need to see all everybody at some point. Uh, we don't know whether we're going to go 100% online or hybrid or what. Uh, but if it is 100% online, that's definitely uh, very important, yes, to, to have a Zoom time that, where they can do something. But they got to be prepared ahead of time. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And so how do you do that is by, by being very clear on your online requirement. Yeah. Yes, Natalie? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And that's what I'm planning to you know, now, now that we're done looking back at the three months behind us and what went well, what did not go well, what I don't want to do again, what I would like to do instead, and using the summer to look, look back at that and, and plan ahead. And, um, and yeah, and we, but as you said, we need the support of the administration and we need the expectations to be across the board to all teachers, all classes, 
you know, what, once we started this, we were giving deadlines. And, and then two weeks after, we were being told, actually, late work is not going to be counted against them. They can pass it at any time. Okay, well, then I just, yeah. you know, only a few kids passed in the work on time because that's the way they were. They would always pass their work on time anyway. Yeah. But a lot of them, which I would get the work, whatever, a week later, two weeks later. I'm and that's not, that's not fair to... Yeah. To, to the kid and it's not fair to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and that's, uh, that is why I'm, although I'm telling you that you can use Moodle or you can use a, and I highly suggest that you do, uh, mm -hmm. that you prepare it. Because if you prepare your class on a Moodle format, yeah. you can transfer it to another one. That would be very easy to do. So, uh, but, it would be really nice if you have a voice in your administration, or if you know someone who speaks yeah. loud, uh, <laughs> very loud, yeah. to make but sure that they, they decide on Canvas. Because the beauty of that is the administration can also enter those classes oh. and see if everybody is, wow. you know, uh, not one doing a, too much work and uh, yeah. giving too much work and another yeah. one uh, not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and they can check on that if they want to, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I'm going to tell my, I'm going to tell my department head because we haven't heard about any possibility so far of learn, of using a LMS uh, next year. So, no. you know, I don't think they know, like this week is our professional development week. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is basically we're just using the time to kind of reflect and close the grids and all that stuff. But we're not talking about anything about next year yet. And, and you're going to hear a lot of people just telling you, oh, I use this and I use that and I use this. This is great and wonderful. And, and mm -hmm. pretty soon your head is this big. Yeah. And you don't have 28 hours per day to learn everything or to even look into it. You don't have that time, mm -hmm. okay? So yeah. my, my suggestion to you is that become a teacher again. Forget the technology. Say I want Canvas, I want an LMS, and start working backward with your, what you want to accomplish, and that you can always defend, okay? That is because nobody told you, I mean, that you have to become a tech expert. That was not written in your contract, okay? No. Your contract is to teach the language. And you, you decide how much time you want to spend in learn and, and visiting new sites and new fun things. Fun is not going to engage the students anymore. You know, that's very right. I want to say something about that. My students loved to play Kahoot, everybody knows Kahoot, obviously, yeah. right, the game. When we were in class, before, before we stopped going, and I did some um, on Zoom with them, you know, with the sharing the screen and all that. Oh my gosh, the faces, they were not excited anymore. I was having more fun than them. And then when I said, oh, let's do one again on Thursday, would you like that? Oh, no, we don't really have to do that, it's okay. No. They were not buying that anymore. They didn't want it. Because and, when they were in class, that was a great way to not learn <laughs> or to, to, but, be, to be in a different, to be social also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing is I used to do the Mani Musical. You know, that some of you do yeah. that. The, comp yeah. the competition with all the French songs and all that. And we had just started that, just started that before we stopped going to school. But I, and I decided to continue it thinking, oh, it's going to be a fun thing that we're still doing. That's not just about learning the grammar or whatever we're doing, but they really didn't engage into it. I don't even know if they really watched the videos carefully or they just picked, you know, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. which title to win. Um, I gave exercises to go with each song. They, I didn't get a lot of responses. I don't know. I was disappointed in that too. Yeah. Because they love doing that. But uh, talking about music, yeah. Uh, it could be one of the things you do as a routine every two huh? weeks, yeah. you know, once yeah. every two weeks. So you do it seven times, seven songs. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, less is more. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning that now. 
Okay. That's, that's something I want to change. Yeah. And, and really, uh, you have the opportunity now to look into the future. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think this is going to go away, that oh. hybrid system. So if you really um, embrace it, and keep in mind, you know, if, if you don't want to do a semester, do at least a quarter, okay? But you need to have that semester goal. Uh, and keep in mind that whatever you do now is going to be used anyhow. You can use it because even if you're back in the classroom 100%, which I doubt, uh, you can tell them, get your computer out yeah. <laughs> and do the work. You know, nothing stops you. So, uh, and you're there to, to monitor and to, to be the referee. And I always thought of myself as a referee. Uh, I'm not a, a pitcher full of water and I'm pouring down the brain of those kids. No, I'm opening doors for them, that's all. And that's really, so we almost have to go back to the essence of teaching, you know, and what is a good strategy and a good teaching. I'm going to leave it open to questions because we're getting close to the end. And I know Lavanya has some questions for everybody. <laughs> yes. Uh, Irene, when you were doing online teaching, what method did you use for giving feedback to the students? Because I'm finding that to be the hardest thing. With Canvas, uh, well, I had office hours. And uh, I also, anything in writing, uh, I could uh, just comment on it. Uh, in the chat room, I was not, uh, I was just reading through and, and it was a check mark or not. Don't grade everything. That's another thing I've learned. Again, keep in mind, mastery. You want them exposed. You know, they're not gonna learn. Some of them will learn more because they are into a grade, but then that's OCD, okay? So <laughs> let's, let's make sure. <laughs> and as teacher, we have a tendency to do that. But I'm all for, you know, the, the, the softer approach and the uh, holistic approach to teaching. What will go in, will go in. Uh, maybe that's my personality and I've told Natalie many, many times, slow down, you know, you can't do it all. I've told Lavanya that. I think I've mentioned it two or three times to Beth Ann too. <laughs> It's up to them too, mm. okay? And I don't know if, uh, if uh, Lavanya is okay with it, but I was going to give everyone my email address if they have further questions, <laughs> you know. I just have one thing to say. There are some new um, technology tools. I think it's uh, Peer Deck or Book Creator that you can give feedback, I think. So you can use that as well. Feedback. Can you put the, can you put the second one in the chat? I um, Pear Deck is one that I'm familiar with, but I, I'm not familiar with the other one that you mentioned. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that while you you hear. I'm gonna put uh, a link. That's mm -hmm. a lady that give a, um, the webinar for for um, Book Creator. She's really great, and I'm gonna post her information. Check it out, and she has recording save as well. I'm so the Book Creator, you can even put your kind of not your rules, but there, it was a nice little handbook of what to do in the class. You did a really good job of that. Okay. So I'll put it for you. Book reader. Basically, yes. the kids can put together their own book that they can share with kids and place with other students if you want them to. It was really nice. It can either be for journaling or for a project. Well, easier and, and that could be incorporated very easily in your planning. You know, yes. whatever you decide, whatever you're comfortable with. Can but I be. do like with some of the responses is there's a way to, um, like with Seesaw, with the voice, being able to respond back and forth to kids with voice is a time saver and it's a lot more personalized. So that's coming out with a lot of the new technology. But I like the idea of 
limiting at least by quarter the technology that you use, just one or two, and then maybe next quarter you change it up yeah. with just one or two. To avoid the, the boredom, to avoid, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. And right now it's and hard to plan what to use because it keeps, like uh, the, the Google site, they're saying, oh, we're doing upgrades. So they're going to have all these things that people were doing in Zoom, now you can do it in Google. So it's hard to plan because you don't know by yeah. September what they're all going <laughs> to <laughs> and I, you know, I tell you, Google is going to come come up with something like Canvas and LMS soon yeah. enough. I'm yeah. sure. I'm they sure they're working on it as we speak. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Lavinia. Uh, so, Erin, thank you so much um, for helping us to kind of figure out like what how we can leverage what we already know um, and plan for what's what we don't know is coming in the fall or <laughs> are starting to get an idea of what's coming at, uh, in the fall. Um, so for everyone, um, I am putting uh, a link in the chat uh, and that's just to provide uh, an opportunity to provide